Thanks, guys. And Vicki, wow, what an amazing group this is. And what an incredible opportunity. But you know, I'm still feeling a little weepy from hearing that music. I'm the kind of person who live music just makes the tears start to flow. Like I'm the one standing in the back of the school <laughs> concerts, absolutely weeping. And if it's a group, like a Broadway show, or the Blind Boys of Alabama, <laughs> scoop me off the floor. Um, sadly, I can't sing. And I've never been called by Oprah, and I don't have any gold teeth. Nor do I have aspirations for any. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep quiet on Botox and butt lifts. <laughs> I have to say, there's no cleavage, there's not much, but it's all mine. <laughs> so, um, but I am really glad to be here today. I'm gonna read to you an excerpt from my memoir um, that came out in paperback just a few weeks ago. It's called The Possibility of Everything. Mm -hmm. And it is the true but wacky story of taking my three-year-old daughter to Mayan shamans in Belize to get rid of her aggressive imaginary friend. <laughs> it's a journey that my husband and I took. Um, true story. <laughs> yeah, it's <she's> stranger than fiction. <laughs> uh, and so I'm going to read you about a, an eight or nine minute section of the book. I really like reading this section because it tells you where the title of the book comes from. Um, the story, in, in a real nutshell, just to bring you up to date, because I'm going to read to you from page 67, is that when my daughter was three years old, she presented with an imaginary friend, which uh, is developmentally normal for many three-year-olds. I have an imaginary friend. My sister had one. 99% of the time, it is benign. But my daughter's case was anything but textbook. She had an imaginary friend that changed. When, his, when he appeared, he changed her behavior dramatically. Um, his name, she called him Dodo. And he, he encouraged her or provoked her to do things that she wouldn't have done normally, I think. Um, she, he seemed to torment her. She spoke to him in a language I couldn't understand. So I did what any mom would do. You know, at first I went to the parenting books and read about imaginary friends. Then I spoke with the preschool teacher, and I called the pediatrician, and I consulted with therapists. And everybody kept saying, leave her alone. She'll grow out of it. It's perfectly normal. But she seemed to be growing into it. And this was all happening at a time in my life that was pretty chaotic. I was kind of, felt like I was living in a little crucible. This was the beginning, or the, actually the middle, of the dot-com boom. And my husband's a high-tech guy. And he was one of those guys that would sleep under his desk at night to get the startup company going if his wife didn't drag him home at 11 p.m. every night. So he was working 90 hours a week and sometimes more. We had a three-year-old, and so I was basically taking care of him myself. We had moved here from New York right around the time she was born. And so I was feeling very much still a displaced New Yorker in Los Angeles. I was out here without any family to help me. Um, we, so, and, and I was struggling to hold on to my career at a time and still give my child one parent that she could rely on on a consistent basis. So all this came into play in that environment in our, in our household. Also, what's very important for you to know is that um, there is schizo a history of schizophrenia in my family. And so that was very alarming to me when my child started talking to someone that I couldn't see or hear. Um, there's a history of mental illness, in, in fact, in both sides of the family. So, we, so I immediately went to that place of being worried and being afraid. But we had a, a babysitter, a nanny, who would live with us four days a week, who was from Nicaragua. And she was just very uh, quietly on the sidelines observing what was going on in our house. And uh, one day she stepped forward with her analysis of events. And it was the first time that I started thinking maybe there is another way to think about this situation. So I'm going to read you the section where Carmen comes into play and becomes a, a real character in the story. And I think all you need to know here are everybody's names. Carmen is the babysitter. Um, my daughter's name is Maya, which is pure coincidence. We did not name her Maya because we were bringing her to Mayan healers. My husband, my husband's name, although they loved it down there when, when they met her. Uh, my husband's name is Uzi, and um, Carmen calls the imaginary friend El Dodo. And I think she calls him that to give him the kind of gravity that she felt he deserved. So I'll, I'll just dive right in here. 